Hi! In this short video, let's take a look at what is inside this battery adapter for the Sony A6000 digital camera. I bought this battery adapter a while ago because I didn't want to worry about battery life when I was shooting videos. The batteries for the A6000 does not really last that long, and for those who have the A6000 cameras, you know that you cannot power the camera via the USB port. The USB port is only for charging, and during charging you cannot use the camera. So that's clearly one of the drawbacks of the A6000 model. But the camera is excellent in terms of uh, focusing speed and uh, shooting quality. So in my view, the benefit clearly outweighs its minor annoyance. But anyway, when I first got this battery adapter, I thought it was just a simple pass-through device. Um, after all, a battery adapter, all it needs to do is bring the source to the correct pins on this uh, adapter module. So it really doesn't need anything uh, inside. But then I noticed that it is actually drawing some current if connected to a power source. So let me show you right here. And for that, I'm going to measure it using my um, multimeter here. I'm going to set it to microamp range because I know that uh, it doesn't draw that much more than uh, a few microamps. Um, so let's put it here so that we can actually read. All right. So now I made this uh, kind of uh, adapter so that I can actually measure the current. All it does is it plugs in uh, through this plug and I can plug the uh, battery adapter here. And now I have this, uh, uh, this two disconnected so I can measure the current draw. Okay. And by the way, the power supply I'm using uh, has an output voltage of 8.4 volts. So now let me actually connect this to microamp. And it's not as sharp as it should be. I think there's some angle has some issues, but hopefully you can see this. So now I'm just measuring the uh, current. And as you can see, we are drawing, you know, it's uh, dropping a little bit, but 30 some odd microamps. So now we know that uh, this one does uh, draw some current. So I'm wondering what kind of uh, circuit is inside. Uh, so for that, let's uh, take it apart and take a look. And it only has this one screw, so uh, I'm just gonna take the screw out and hopefully we can see what's inside. Okay, so now the screw is uh, removed, and I think I can just uh, pry open this, and I don't want to break it, and it does take, hang on, no, there's no catches anywhere, so I think it's just uh, brute force, let me just try it again, yes, so, ah, and as we can see, we do have a, uh, interestingly, we do have a, uh, module inside. So let me try gently remove it. See uh, if we can see it better. Okay. So now I just uh, remove the module and I will take some high resolution pictures so you can actually see it uh, if you want to figure out what this does. But unfortunately the only chip that is on board is actually uh, this uh, uh, black blob so I wouldn't be able to know what it's doing. But just from this chip itself, interestingly, if you look at the letter designation here, it looks to me, it's a, um, it's a standard battery mo management module. So, you know, for those lithium uh, iron batteries, you always see this kind of battery management module. And you see the BM designation here, and the B plus, B minus. So those are clearly the battery plus and minus input. So that is very interesting. I wonder why you need this uh, battery management module when um, clearly it's just a battery adapter. So at first glance, I thought this might just be a standard uh, battery management module for limited 
the overall current and uh, um, for over voltage protection and stuff like that. But after looking at a little bit more, I started doubting that was what it used for. Because as you can see here, and which I will show you right now, as you can see, let me pop this up a little bit so you can see the reading a little better. Uh, let me move it to continuity mode. So as you can see here, this battery negative terminal is connected to this device, and which is a short hit, and the other side is also short hit. So that made me believe that this uh, uh, black device here is a current shunt resistor. And so it's doing some sort of a current measurement. Now the negative side, so via this uh, current shunt, is connected directly to the negative side of the battery terminal, and the positive side seems to be directly connected to the positive terminal. So the circuit here uh, is doing nothing but uh, measuring the current here. And uh, we can validate this by just hooking up a uh, power supply adjustable power supply. So this time instead of this uh, 8.4 volts supply, I'm just going to hook it up with a adjustable power supply. And uh, so what I want to see is that, you know, this indeed does not regulate the input voltage or the, uh, the current. So let's uh, hook it up here. And uh, now I have my bench supply on the other end. So this is the positive. This is the uh, negative. And right now I'm just setting it to um, around 7 volts. I wanted to see if the output is uh, 7 volts, which I suspect it is. So let's uh, take a look here. And it's 7 volts. So let's see. Uh, it should read. Uh, yeah. Yep, 7.1. So now if I adjust the uh, the voltage to let's say 8. Point, um, I'm going to adjust a little higher to to 8.6. So now we should be able to measure that voltage is also 8.6. Uh, so clearly, yep, so 8.7. So clearly there's no voltage regulation here. Now is there any current? Uh, limiting capability. And I also don't think uh, there's any way you can limit the current because this uh, current shunt is directly mounted uh, between the negative and uh, the output pin. So any current flowing through here would uh, simply just uh, you know produce some kind of voltage drop but nevertheless it does not cut off any current. So now let's uh, Let's measure the uh, the current, that uh, the short current. So I adjusted the power supply to limit the current to roughly two amps. Now we're gonna just short it out, and I'm not too concerned because the only thing that we know is connecting the uh, uh, in this current loop is this sense resistor, which is uh, perfectly fine for handling two amps uh, with no problem. So indeed. The current flow is 2 amps. Let me just uh, reverse the meter here. So uh, it doesn't really matter, but just want to see it. Yep. So it's 2 amps. So clearly, this board does not regulate uh, current. Sorry, does not regulate voltage, nor does it uh, uh, limit the current. So I'm really puzzled as to what the purpose of this board is as it doesn't regulate the voltage coming in and it doesn't limit the current going out. So to me, really, it's not doing much at all. And if you have any ideas, please leave me a comment below. So let me put this back and uh, we'll see if we can do something else. Anyway, while we still have the battery adapter here, let's take a look at the, the sleep current of my Sony 86000. 
And yes, for that, I just switched my recording camera to my old Canon PowerShot. And uh, what you're seeing here is the camera that uh, I started using for recording lately, which is uh, really nice. And uh, um, the reason I was curious to do this is that at the time when I bought this camera, there were lots of discussions on various forums complaining about the actual, uh, sorry, the unusually high current draw when it is powered off. People had claimed that the battery would only uh, last for a few days um, if left inside. But most sources I can find attributed the problem to some older firmware the camera used and claimed that the problem had been fixed with the latest firmware update. Since my camera had the latest 3.2 version firmware, this power drain issue should have been fixed or at least uh, uh, improved. So even though I, I don't have any definitive numbers, I did feel that uh, the battery still draws quite a bit because if I leave it uh, for a couple weeks, let's say, the battery capacity uh, would drop from 100% to let's say 90%, 70, uh, 90%, 80%. So it's still an issue, but it's a lot better. But let's uh, take a look at exactly how much current it draws when on standby. So for that I'm taking out uh, the camera, the battery inside, and I'm going to put in this power adapter. So this is uh, actually a benefit of using a power adapter, otherwise there's no way for me to measure uh, the current without having to uh, be creative. So let me uh, push that in. And this is quite nice, it has a little uh, exit door for the cable to come out. So now I, I am using the same uh, uh, setup here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the power here and uh, set my panel. Let me uh, prop this up. So let me prop up the, uh, the display here. And set this to, let's do um, milliamp. And I don't think it's going to be that high. So, so bear with me here so that we can see here. And now I'm going to uh, use my finger right here. And at first it draws about 100 uh, milliamps. That's probably just initial power off. Wow, this standby current is quite insane. It's at 3.93 milliamps. So this is a figure after Sony had fixed the excessive current standby issue. Now I could only imagine what the original standby current draw was. This is actually quite a surprise given uh, today's abundance of low standby power processors and I think Sony could have done a much better job than that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up, and I will catch up with you next time.